Welcome back to my studio. In this video, I will show you how I made the chemise for my Saki Zhao Cinderella dress. I like to start with my undergarments for costumes, so I have a good foundation to drape the outer layers over. I draped this pattern myself, and before starting this video, I spent a day making a mock-up with it. The mock-up was quite an epic fail, but I learned from the choices I made, specifically in the garment measurements and the width for each ruffle. You can see I even gave up on adding the final ruffle because I just knew that I needed to make the adjustments. So I went ahead and sketched out my, my new pattern idea and my ruffle measurements, and I jumped straight in to put this pattern on paper. The idea was to make a trapezoid with 48 inches at the top and 56 inches at the bottom, and then it would gather down to my bust measurement and drape off my upper bust. This will have an underbust corset over it to keep it in place when I wear it. After making my pattern, I cut the front panels out on the fold. Then I line up the lines from the front panel to place the pattern on the salvage for the back two panels. I cut it out on the salvage to make it easier to sew up in the back later. Now it's time to cut my ruffles. My fabric was 120 inches wide and my ruffles were going to be 115 inches long. So I just bumped it up to 120 and cut my pieces by measuring five and a half inches for the width and use my rotary tool to cut through all four layers of fabric at the same time. Before I start sewing, I actually change my needle be to be the size 7010 for the fabric. This is important because if the needle is too wide, it will actually make my fabric pucker and I don't want that. So now I will be sewing the panels together using a French seam. I explain how to do a French seam in another video that I'll link at the top of this corner. So once my panels were sewn together, I leave the back panel unsewn for now and start sewing the hem of my ruffles. To do this, I fold the fabric up 3 eighths of an inch and then again 3 eighths of an inch to create a rolled hem and then with a straight stitch set at 2.5 millimeter length, I sew up all of the hems. That's a lot of hems. It's over 13 yards of hemming. <laughs> After that, I press all of my hems so they lay flat and crisp. Now I'm gonna test out a feature on the Janome HD 3000 called the Overcast Stitch. This is essentially a way to create a clean edge without French seams or an overlock machine. So I switch my presser foot to the C foot. I change the stitch width to five. I change the stitch type to 18, and finally I change the tension to 5. Now it's time to test a piece of this fabric and see how it looks before I actually use it on my 13 yards of ruffles. It looks great to me, so now I'm going to use it on my actual fabric, and this takes quite a bit of time. So here you go in 10 seconds. Once the top of my ruffles had the overlock stitch on them, I mark each ruffle in the middle and two quarters lengthwise so that I could prep for my gather stitches. I chose to hand gather these ruffles because I like how much control I have over the gather placement, but in future video tutorials, I will show you how to use other methods to gather. On every ruffle, I add the base stitch at four millimeter length. Then each quarter of the ruffle will get its own base stitch underneath that, that I will not backstitch on either side so I can use the thread tails to gather down the piece. Once all the gather stitches are in place, I start pinning my pieces to the top of the base garment, matching my quarter markings to the center and sides of the dress. Then I pull the thread tails together down my ruffle and you evenly disperse the gather placements. Once the ruffle is gathered and pinned, I will stitch it down with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Before moving on to the other ruffles, I actually add a piece of binding to the top that is wider than my ribbon that, uh, that will end up going through it. I used a 4.5 by 50 inch piece of fabric pressed in half and then quarters and then stitched it down with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Add the 
other ruffles the exact way I added the first. For the second and third ruffle, I actually measured 11 and 14 inches down the dress so I could place them where I want my corset to end. Once all my ruffles were added, I can close up the back of the base garment by sewing the right sides together. Since I cut these pieces on the salvage, I already have a clean seam, so I can skip the French seam on this part. The last thing to do is add ribbon to the binding strip by using a safety pin to guide the ribbon through all the way around. This is how I will gather the chemise down to fit over my bust. Then I will hand sew a hook and eye into the back for a little more security and the garment is finished. Overall, this was a pretty quick project. It took about six hours of making a mock-up and then eight hours sewing the actual garment. When I finish my corset to pair with it, I will most likely add spaghetti straps to it to hold it in place, even though they're not in the original art. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for next week's video where I will be making the corset to go over this chemise. See you next time and happy sewing!